So good morning, everyone. I am Orly Burlov. And I'm Noelle Vestal. And we are here on Prevail's Compliance Corner. So today we're going to try and do something we haven't done before, and that's have a short compliance corner. We can do Ooh, this. We can do this. Noelle, Noelle's my training coach. Um, and so we are going to try and do a kind of just a short bite size. You know, we know a little compliance corner. Normally we do slightly longer conversations and those are great and they have their place. But we're going to try and do one that's a little bit more bite size. So, you know, maybe while you're in your car or you just have maybe 10 minutes and you want to hear and get educated on something, uh, you can use this video to do that. So today's topic is going to be on the six IT talking points uh, that you need in order to brief your D, your CEO on DOD compliance. Um, you know, we wrote this as a blog a couple of months ago, really successful, and we thought we'd translate that into kind of a short compliance corner. So there are essentially six points. Um, and why don't we go, get started with Noelle? You, you ready? All right, let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right. So point number one that um, IT uh, needs to brief the CEO on if they're, that organization is looking to achieve CMMC compliance or NIST 800-171 compliance is that DFAR 7012 is a contractual obligation. So, you know, just step back one second before I jump, uh, jump it over to you. You know, the way in which you know that you have to uh, meet all this DFARs and NIST stuff is if you have a DFAR 7012 compliance uh, co uh, control in your contract. Um, and so while you jump on over there and to no while we jump over to Noel and you can explain this. Sure, absolutely. So DFAR 7012 is a clause that's been in contracts since December 31st of 2017 for DOD. Um, and pretty much every contract, just about every single contract has it at this point. So double check, but you probably have a 7012 clause if you have DOD work of any kind and have a contract with the DOD. So what it states in there is there's, there's these are the big highlights. Obviously, we definitely recommend you going and looking at our 7012 deep dive that we have. We'll put that in the show notes. That was a compliance corner we did a, a few months ago. Very informative, but at a very high level, you've got to have FIPS encryption and it's got to be validated by the NIST laboratories. It's got to be 140-2 for all of your storage and transmission of CUI. You have to make sure that you are adhering to paragraphs C through G that deal with incident like response and security response reporting. And then you also have to make sure that if you are using a cloud service provider, they are they are FedRAMP moderate or FedRAMP moderate equivalent. And then the big one, the huge one for most people is the adherence to the NIST 800-171 standard. So that's 110 controls that every individual company that does have a 7012 clause will have to address those 110 controls. All right. The second point here uh, that should be a key IT talking point is on uh, DFAR 7019 and 7020. So those came out in around November of 2020. Um, and there's increased enforcement on those. Why don't you explain what 7019 and 20 are really quickly and the enforcement mechanism there? Absolutely. So 7019 is talking about the SPURS score. So that's the supplier risk. I'm always so bad at remembering all of the words for it, but it, it's, it's, the, it's the reporting tool with the DOD where you have to actually put in your self-assessment score to say, based on, again, what we just talked about, the DFARS 7012 requirement of NIST 800-171 compliance. So those 110 controls, you have to go into the SPURS system and actually put in, you know, yes, I'm doing this. No, I'm not for every single one of those controls. And then you end up with a score. So that is part of it. That's 7019 responsibility. 7020 actually the biggest part of 7020, well, the two biggest parts, is there is a flow down for all of your subcontractors. So if I'm a prime contractor and I use 10 subs, those 10 subs, I have to be able to attest to the DOD if ever asked that, yes, they are actually 800-171 compliant with whatever evidence I need to have, you know, whatever I feel comfortable right. with, that's up to the company. On top of that, it also is the assessment sort of um, overarching DFARS, where that 7012 or 7020, excuse me, is stating that you as a company owner with work with the DOD will allow the DIBCAC or any other DOD representative to come in and do an assessment of you if needed. And that's either paper assessment or a full assessment, depending on the situation. And those are, the key point there is, those are, in effect now. And so you have to have that SSP and they can come, the, the bad boys from the DOD can come knocking at your door any day. Absolutely. All right. Yes. Point number three. Uh, the sixth, uh, 
third of the six IT talking points is on your system security plan. Mm -hmm. So why don't you go ahead and explain it and say why it's important, why you have to have it. Sure, absolutely. So a system security plan, think of it as sort of like the the be all end all for your organization. When that assessor comes in, they are going to look at your SSP, your system security plan, more than they look at pretty much anything else. It should be a very high level, but also robust enough to give information to an assessor so they can say, okay, you're saying that you're doing this and this and this and this for this control. Now I can look at what you're stating that you're doing and then go and look at your evidence and your artifacts to see if that's actually being followed through. And they'll also do interviews with people and that sort of thing. So your system security plan really is the be all end all for your assessment uh, program, 100%. Point number four, we're doing well here. Uh, Non-compliance with NIST is a material breach of contract. Ooh, yeah, that sounds pretty bad. All it right. is very bad. <laughs> so much worse than what it sounds I sound like. any more naive. Oh, that sounds bad. Yeah, that sounds bad. Uh, it's extremely bad. Yeah, you definitely do not ever want the word breach of, like the words breach of contract involved with the Department of Defense or any government entity. Um, yeah, if you are in breach of contract, there are all kinds of different, different mechanisms that the DOD has, like the False Claims Act and the CCFI, which is the cyber the cyber, this civilian cyber fraud initiative program with the DOJ, there's, again, we have tons of videos about that stuff. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail there, but yes, you are considered in breach of contract. If you are not doing the things in the contract that you signed and said that you are doing DFAR 7012 says you should be doing this state hundred one seventy one. If you sign that contract and your company is working with the DOD and giving them invoices and getting paid for that work, you're also supposed to be doing what it says in all of your different contract clauses, including 7012. So absolutely, it can 100% be a breach of contract. Point number five, uh, now is the time to prepare for um, CMMC and NIST. Um, what, what, is the, what is the point there to make? Uh, yesterday and, you know, a year ago was even the time to do this. Um, so yes, if you have not gotten anything anything started on your compliance journey I mean, again we have countless videos countless videos talking about this there's so many different people out there in the ecosystem like stacy bastianic who is the head of you know of, of all of this she has said it many times i've heard it from so many different c3 paos and different people in this org in different organizations it needs to get done now cmmc is only a mechanism to check the box that you're doing what 7012 has already been asking you to do for years that is the biggest thing right. you have to remember and that is the point that definitely should be made to any ceo because this is a risk situation where because like we just talked about you are considered in breach of contract whether or not you even realize it right now by not doing this now Nobody has right. found you yet, and that's great for you. But at some point, somebody is going to come checking. So, it really, it's really not a risk that I would want to take if if I had a company. Definitely, but you know, definitely get it done now. <laughs> point number six. I'm so happy I can count. I'm so happy you can count too. All right, I think that looks like a six or a, a turkey. Close, close not enough. Sure. Close enough. All right, point number six. Um, the CEO uh, is responsible for validating the uh, SPRS. So essentially signing off and saying, yes, uh, what is in this SPRS um, is to the best of my knowledge, uh, right and accurate. And um, I, I ain't lying. Um, all right, so first of all, why is that important? And uh, what, is that, uh, what does that mean for a defense contractor? Yeah, definitely. So a quick little caveat on this. Technically speaking, you can have any person in your organization be responsible for your SPURS score. We highly recommend it be your CEO because- right. well, not hey, the staff lady. Yeah, not just some random person who is walking around or like, you know, some low level intern or something. Because your SPURS score can only have one person that's responsible for it. Like that one person who is considered the POC. So you want to have somebody that's either- the CEO is highly recommended, but if not the CEO, then someone at the executive staff level, you know, a COO or CTO, CTO, right. CTO, whatever, someone like that, because you don't want someone who's going to be sort of, you know, those, there are all, all of us know about those different positions that kind of people sort of float in and out of. If that happens, obviously you're going to have to work with Spurs to then update all of that information. And that's a pain that you probably don't want. And also- right. If and when there is a situation where, you know, the DOD needs to come to somebody and say, hey, this is your SPUR score. I need to have a talk to you about it. 
you don't want them talking to some like random intern. You want them talking to the CEO. Right. Right. All right. So six points uh, that you need to know about if you're talking to your CEO about compliance. Um, main things here are make sure, number one, you know that DFAR 7012 is a contractual obligation. Uh, 7019 and 7020 are increasing the resp um, increase the enforcement. Make sure you have an SSP. That's point three. Um, point four, noncompliance is a material breach of contract. Mm -hmm. Point five, most important there, now yesterday and last week were always the best time to prepare. You should have been doing this for a while. If you haven't, get started. And last point, CEO is responsible for ensuring the validity of your SPRS scores. If you have any questions about anything you heard, reach out to us um, at compliance.prevail.com. Always happy to answer your questions and, uh, and hope you enjoyed this short episode. <music>